Well, over the years, I've always, I was always interested in making a film on Jesus, either from um, uh, the character of Jesus, uh, either seen through the Gospels or through other eyes, in a sense. Uh, I remember being very, very um, moved by um, Pasolini's uh, film, Gospel According to St. Matthew, which was really a wonderful script. It was the Gospel, sorry. <laughs> And, um, but what was really interesting about the film was its offhanded manner, production manner, in which you have uh, almost a cinema verite, uh, a uh, direct cinema, almost like a newsreel of the period in black and white. And uh, I found that to be fascinating. But um, as the years went on, I was inspired to make this film about Jesus. The material I found to be, uh, I found to be, uh, the same direct line, where you have um, one scene that shows uh, four different versions in the four different Gospels. Um, until I came upon um, the Kazantzakis book around 1972. Kazantzakis was interesting because he, he uh, of course, it's a work of fiction. And what was fascinating about the Kazantzakis idea was that he approached the, um, the uh, substance of Jesus, the substance of Christ, from the two vantage points, the point of Jesus as human and Jesus as divine. And uh, in a sense, it's according to certain councils in the early, uh, the early um, uh, beginning of the first thousand years of Christianity. Um, in one of the councils, I think it's Chalcedon, um, it's determined that uh, uh, Christianity, uh, Jesus was fully human and fully divine, one at the same time. And I think over the years, we've been mainly seeing images of, uh, of representations of Jesus as uh, mainly divine the divine side, the divine aspect of him. And what fascinated me about the Kazantzakis idea was he went through the other way, the human nature. And again, I have to uh, state, it's fully divine and fully human, one and the same being, one entity, right? Both natures. And uh, in Kazantzakis' idea, uh, the human nature can't accept that fact until the very last moment, until he, gives, until he gives in and does God's will, does his Father's will, and dies on the cross as the sacrifice for humanity. And I found that to be fascinating because, uh, in a sense, if the human nature fights the divine nature, then the human nature is suffering and is struggling, just, just exactly as we do struggle and, and suffer, and uh, suffer uh, pain and suffer uh, doubt and suffer temptations of all kinds, temptations of pride, temptations of the flesh. And he has to overcome them. It makes this, it makes this for me, it makes this Jesus, this God, our God, more understandable and more accessible to an audience um, and in a sense gives us a God I think that we can care about that cares about us more and we can care about because he really knows what we go through and he really is afraid to die on the cross but again you have to understand the reason why there's this reaction against the story or the picture is because um, uh, these are of course very personal views this is I find interpreting Jesus through Kazantzakis onto film by way of Paul Schrader and myself and Jay Cox, who also did some of the writing, and uh, finally Willem Dafoe. We're, uh, we're interpreting Jesus on a very one-to-one -one level in a very personal way. It's, it's uh, as I said before, it's my own way. It's, it's like making a very personal film. And uh, uh, it seems that to anyone who really believes fully and solely in the errancy of the Bible, that one cannot deter one word from the Bible, from what is written, would have, would have, understandably, would have a problem with this, with this interpretation, with this approach. And as I said, this is not a film uh, to shake anybody's faith. That's the last thing in the world I'd want to do. I feel that if they have faith, the faith is strong, and this film would never, uh, would never hurt anyone's faith. That's for sure. And Peter Gabriel has said, he said this is a film that if anyone sees, if anyone who has faith and sees this film, they will not lose their faith, and, and those who see it and who do not, do not have faith will gain faith by seeing it. <laughs> Well, and Peter feels very strongly about it. There are people who worked on his crew who were feeling that way. At first felt certain ways and then, and then were, uh, were uh, overwhelmed by the picture. Uh, it, it also goes, it also goes, I mean, if you believe in a certain way, we're not saying to, to, this is the right way. We're not saying this is the actual story. This is a, a taking off point. This is a, uh, this is a, a point of departure and I, a, a, a level from which to take off to discuss and to make our lives a little more meaningful. A little more meaningful. And that, that's, that's really what it's about. That's, that's why I wanted to make the picture. I was raised a Roman Catholic, and um, I uh, was very strongly influenced by the church, and wanted, for a very long period of time, wanted to be a priest, a diocesan priest here in New York. And uh, that didn't work out. I was 
out of the seminary, bad, uh, bad grades, a number of things, and went out to um, finish high school in a, in a Roman Catholic um, high school, and eventually wound up in film. Uh, but the thrust of my life, the, the, uh, I think the thing that shows up, uh, the element that shows up in many of my films, too, has still to deal with religion. I just find it, I, it's one of the things I'm always uh, fascinated by, and uh, how to live one's life in this world uh, a good way. I mean, a Christian way, a way of which the concept is love and not hate. And that's a very, very difficult thing, I think, to, uh, uh, to try to do. We knew that there'd be opposition to the film from, uh, from again, from, I say, people who, who um, believe in the errancy of the Bible or feel certain, uh, who want to, who feel their relationship with God is a certain way and don't want to be disturbed don't want to, and feel that we might be shaking other people's face and that sort of thing. And that, as I say, that's not our intention, nor is, it, nor is it, I think, would be the result, nor would it be the result of seeing this film. I think, uh, I think this picture um, uh, would generate uh, a lot of interest in God, and interest especially in how one stands with God. But at, at any rate, at any rate um, we expected some, some opposition. Uh, the nature of the opposition, the ugly quality of it, is surprising and shocking and, and saddening, really. I find it saddening, uh, especially the anti-Semitism involved and uh, uh, the death threats, that sort of thing. Uh, but you know, I have certain feelings about God. I'd like to be able to say them. And from the look of things, the people who have worked on the film, the people who have seen the film, the people who have written me notes who work in the, the rooms back here and just do some technical work and, and feel that their lives have been enriched by working on the film, by listening to even the dialogue from the film. Uh, I, uh, I just want to be able to say it, that's all. I want to be able to say it. I don't want to offend anybody else. But I just would love to be able to get some of these points across and have the film say, have you ever felt this way? And if you do, what, what do you think about it? And how do you, uh, how, what do you think about the spirit in your life? We talk about spirit, we always talk about matter all the time. We talk about, I, I, it's difficult. You begin to sound as if you're sermonizing or in a way, but, but you're always thinking about material things. In, in our society, in our culture. And what about what's, what's for the spirit on that? Because we approach the material through the characters, taking off from where Kazantzakis left, in a sense, and approaching in a very realistic manner. I always feel that just because something takes place 2,000 years ago doesn't mean people have changed. The emotions are the same. So we did it extremely contemporary to make it more powerful, to make it mean something to somebody here on 48th Street and 9th Avenue, or on La Cienega Boulevard in LA, or somewhere in Chicago, or somewhere in the South, somewhere in the North, I don't know, but somewhere contemporary. So don't hear, they don't hear language. Uh, the beautiful poetry of the Bible, unfortunately, is not in the film. It's, it's a pity. We weren't able to do it except for the last few lines at the end of the picture in the crucifixion scene. But the main reason for that was to make it contemporary. Uh, very often people hear, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, and they turn off because it's been said too many times. And we have to find a new way to say that, to make it immediate, and to make it, uh, uh, to confront the audience with these ideas of Jesus, the ideas of love, and loving God, and loving your neighbor as yourself. I think it's an important theme. I think it's an important philosophy. And uh, I think it's our only hope. <laughs> I mean, how one goes about loving, how, how one goes about these things in, the, in, the, in life, I, 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 I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think, I guess, it's, I guess I've said this to a number of people we were talking about it, I guess one goes about it one step at a time in their relationship with uh, the people around them, their, their wives, their children, their family. And that's, what, that's, that's the idea. That's the idea of the picture. Uh, so that the um, characters could jump right out of the screen and confront the audience with complete contemporary qualities. Well, OK, the people who are criticizing the picture in terms of Jesus being a wimp or deranged or um, a weakling, especially a weakling, this is uh, disturbing to me because on one level, they're making, they're making their judgments on the basis of having, it, having unfortunately, uh, come across a script that was written. In a sense, it's a very serious misunderstanding. They come across a script that was written by Paul Schrader, for me, and Erwin Winkler, who was the producer at the time in 1983. This script was written in February, the date is February 25th, 1982. It's a long time ago. Uh, that script was never even meant to be shown to a studio. That's like a first draft between myself and the writer in which Paul tries out some ideas based on the novel. And he says, Marty, what about this? What about that? And I say, I don't know if this scene is going to be all right. I think the character needs development here. He seems too weak here. We have to strengthen him here because he's got to develop as, as a messiah and has to begin to accept these things. And the more he accepts, the more he. And we walked, worked, worked through it. Actually, we wound up doing, Schrader did two drafts in 1982. And myself and Jay Cox, uh, who will go uncredited, unfortunately, uh, did um, five drafts, six, no, six drafts. Uh, up until 1987. 
in which the script changed a great deal in many respects. The structure remained basically the same, but the approach to Jesus and the approach to uh, these other scenes that Paul was honestly and simply trying as a, in, a, in, in what we call the creative, uh, creative process to try to, to, uh, to, to uh, transform a 600-page novel to a 90-page script. Some of these things are going to look terrible on the page, so that's why we don't want people to see that sort of thing, because it's between me and the writer. Uh, evidently, they got a hold of the script, and they is uh, quite understandably a uh, complete misunderstanding. The Jesus in my film, in the final analysis, is not a weakling. He's not a wimp. He's not uh, deranged. He's a man who's struggling, who, uh, whose human nature is struggling with his divine nature, and then finally, in the final analysis, the picture accepts his role, accepts God's will. And it's a very powerful character. Now, there are members of the churches who are against the film who read the book and feel that from the book he is depicted as deranged and that sort of thing. This is also different in the film. I feel the film is shorter than a book. The book is 600 pages, the film is over two and a half hours, two hours and 40 minutes, it's a long film. But we feel in the first 25 minutes of the film, Jesus is ambivalent and he's fighting against God, but uh, mainly because he knows deep down something, something unique is expected from him and he's afraid, his human nature is afraid. The human side can't understand it yet. And uh, because it isn't revealed to him completely, you see. And this is, this is not a wimp to me. It's not a guy who's deranged. It's a guy who's scared. It's a guy who's saying, wait a second, I'm struggling here. I'm struggling with God. And I don't know what he wants from me. I have a terrible feeling he wants something really strong. And eventually, I'm going to wind up, uh, it's going to wind up uh, as a major commitment. I'm going to be in big trouble. He said, but basically, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to fight him. And Barbara Hershey was cast as uh, Mary Magdalene. <laughs> Barbara, it is true, Barbara gave me the book, or told me to read the book back in 1972. Um, and... I remember getting the book and reading it over a period of 10 years because I liked it so much I would stop reading it and go back and reread and never quite end it, you see. Back in 78, I finished reading it. I was on the set of uh, a film in Italy, uh, the Vittorio and uh, Paolo Ta Taviani brother film, and a film called Il Prato. I finished it while waiting around their set in 1978. Uh, Barbara Hershey then came by in 1983 and auditioned for the picture. And, uh, in fact, she auditioned three times, and each time she came, and uh, she was just overwhelming. I said, it's, it, it's almost too good to be true to have somebody who gave me the book, who inspired me to read the book originally, come in and, and, uh, and, and tell me at the time when she gave me the book, she also said, hey, listen, you know, when you, when you get to make this picture, if you ever make it, I'm going to play Mary Magdalene. And we kind of smile, and that's for sure, and that sort of thing. And here she is, a few years later, about a few years later, it's 1987 80, uh, we made the film. Um, quite a few years later, she comes by and uh, rehears, uh, auditions, and... Uh, and does so well that uh, I couldn't believe it. we had to come back two more times to really make sure that I wasn't being swayed, you see, <laughs> and to make sure that it was the right thing. And she was just wonderful, and she just did a great job. Willem Dafoe, I just I found him so fascinating to live and die in L.A. I liked him in that. And then I got to meet him, and I liked his attitude, I liked his openness. Uh, he just was ready and willing to do anything to play this. Uh, then I saw him in Platoon after the meeting, and I liked him. And, uh, I asked him to do it 